Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we are going to discuss the argument of complex numbers and the polar representation. So in this topic we will describe and define the argument of a complex number, we will give some examples, and we will describe the polar representation of complex numbers. Now, given the complex number z is equal to alpha plus beta j, there's a natural angle between the line between 0 and z and the positive real line. This angle theta here in the diagram will be denoted as the arg or argument of the complex number z, represented as arg as a function of z. Now, if z is a positive real, then the argument is 0. If z is a negative real number, then the argument is going to be, well, you can either describe it as pi radians, negative pi radians, 180 degrees, or a negative 180 degrees, depending on which angle, which direction you're taking the angle from. If z is a positive imaginary number, the argument is going to be pi by 2 radians, or 90 degrees. And if the complex number z is a negative imaginary number, the argument is going to be either negative pi by 2 or negative 90 degrees, or if you want to go from the other direction, 3 pi by 2 or 270 degrees. Now, in general, the argument should either be a value between negative pi and pi radians, not including negative pi as both pi and negative pi represent the same angle, or alternatively you can go between negative 180 and positive 180. Or you could just keep everything positive and just make sure that the angle is somewhere between 0 and 2 pi, not including 2 pi, or between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, this first representation between negative pi and pi, or between negative 180 and 180, is called the principal argument, and that's the preferred value. You should be consistent, but in this course you will not lose marks for losing one or the other. Now, some fields of engineering are going to be using degrees, others radians, use whatever the instructor uh, prescribes. Now, given the complex number z is equal to alpha plus beta j, finding the argument is as follows. First, the argument of 0 is 0. Next, if alpha is equal to 0, that is, it is an imaginary number, the argument of z is equal to pi, or 90 degrees, if beta is greater than 0, and if beta is less than 0, then the argument is negative pi, or negative 90 degrees. If alpha is greater than 0, then we can find the argument simply by calculating the arc tangent or inverse tangent of beta over alpha. Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so in this case the opposite is the imaginary component, or at least the magnitude of the, or yes, it is the imaginary component, whereas the adjacent is the alpha. Now, if alpha is less than 0, then alpha is negative, which puts a negative value in the denominator, which causes problems for the arctangent function. So, in general, in this case, the argument of z will be the arctangent of beta over alpha, plus or minus pi, where the plus or minus matches the sine of beta. Now, fortunately, all mathematical packages come with a two-argument arctangent function, so we can always find 
the argument of alpha plus beta j by simply calling arctan2 of beta comma alpha. And this will return the correct argument in terms of radians for all points on the complex plane. Now, a quick review, because we're going to use two terms. We're going to use a rectangular representation and a polar representation, and students wonder where the terms come from. Now, near the equator, latitude and longitude give a rectangular grid, where one degree in either direction is approximately 110 and a half kilometers. Doesn't matter which direction you're going in. On the other hand, if you're looking down at the North Pole, then the latitude still gives a distance where one degree is approximately 110 and a half kilometers. However, longitude now strictly defines an angle relative to, well, the prime meridian, which is running through Greenwich, England. Now, given a complex number z is equal to alpha plus beta j, we can also represent this using the polar representation r phase theta, where r is the absolute value of z, and theta is the argument of z. Now, there's a special case where zero as a complex number is described as zero phase zero. And again, the angle symbol is described verbally as phase. For example, 0 0.8 in the polar representation is 0 0.8 phase 0. On the other hand, for a negative real number, such as negative 1.7, we would describe this as being 1.7 phase pi, as the magnitude is 1.7 and the argument is pi, or 180 degrees. 1 plus j is equal to square root of 2 phase 45 degrees, or equivalently square root of 2 phase pi over 4 radians. Now, negative 2.165 plus 1.25j is approximately equal to 2.55 phase 5 sixth pi, which is, again, also equivalent to 150 degrees. So alternatively, you could describe this as 2.5 phase 150. 1 minus 1.6 j is again also approximately equal to 1.8868 phase negative 58 degrees. All right, in summary, you now understand the definition of the argument of a complex number. It is the angle between the complex number z and the origin, that line, and the positive real axis. Now, you're aware that it can be calculated using the arctangent function, but you don't have to memorize the details. You are aware that there is a two-argument arctangent function in most mathematical packages that will make your life a lot easier. You now also understand the polar representation of a complex number, and we looked at some examples. We will not use this that often in this course, but some fields of engineering prefer this representation. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!